Hey everybody, welcome to our channels. Uh, Andrew from Ironman Hacks and James here from Nutrition Triathlon. Subscribe to both of us because we're giving you great stories on LCHF, on types of carbs to use while racing. And now my favorite topic is hydration. Here in Southeast Asia, where I am and where I race, you can see Vietnam in the background, it's always burning hot. Uh, when guys come over from other markets, from other countries like the UK or the US or even Australia, sometimes they're not prepared for the kind of heat and the kind of uh, humidity that we have here. And they underestimate how much they need to, uh, you know, take on sodium as a supplement and even drink water. Um, one of the big controversies I've seen over the years, uh, James, is how much hydration to, how much water to drink, you know, um, famous Dr. Tim Noakes, uh, has said, you know, he's gone, he said, it's all a marketing ploy to get, you know, for Gatorade to get you to drink. What's your take on this? Yeah, it's very, very interesting. Um, and it is an important topic because, and this is certainly something that Tim Noakes talks about is, um, the, the kind of upshot, whether you under or over hydrate is that it could be quite dangerous. Um, and that you can have sodium levels which go out of balance. And, and that's kind of the core of it is one, trying to stay healthy while we race, or at least not to a dangerous level. And the other is trying to improve performance. And there's, yeah, there's different views about it. Um, and in, in truth, there's, there's, probably not one specific right answer in in what's good or bad and i think this is a, an important one and if people are interested in the topic of hydration while racing and want to consider how much they should drink how much sodium they should have then it's worth doing some uh experimenting i would say and, and tracking and we can we can get into that i think there's there's certainly an element of of marketing around it and i think that's fair to say but i think it's also fair to say that it is not all just marketing there, there's been studies that have looked in the past about dehydration and its effect on performance and historically you've probably heard something like two to three percent of your body weight if you lose that then that can start to have uh, um, a detriment on your racing performance a lot of it that was done before was based on studies where it was very artificial and it's not what we would actually see when racing. So, for example, there was one where they gave people a medicine or a group of medicines, a diuretic, which essentially makes you pee a lot. Um, but that also impacts on your sodium, on your potassium and very, very, very much a, a kind of simulated thing, which isn't isn't real. Now, the, the human body is very clever. And the, it retains sodium when it needs to, it retains water when it needs to. And this is very much the argument of, of Tim Noakes and other similar ones in that our body is extremely clever. And we, if we are just drinking to, to thirst, for example, then that is our body's way of just regulating itself and basically drinking as much water as we need to survive. And I suppose that just as a quick kind of uh, background to it, the reason it's important is that our heart pumps blood around our body and it's at a certain pressure. When we sweat and uh, we essentially lose um, water through sweat, which means that our blood volume, which makes up some of that blood pressure, can decrease. And that's where some of the concerns are in that then our heart has to work harder. And also when we sweat, we sweat out sodium. And that's that's the argument or, or kind of the questions around the hydration side of things. The advice that you'll tend to see in certainly sport nutrition guidelines are not to lose two to three percent, more than two to three percent of your body weight. And that's still the recommended advice. But you look at some of the best marathon runners, best triathletes, they might actually lose 5%. Some might even lose 10% of their body weight um, by the end of the race. And that's obviously quite a, a big difference. Um, if we wanted to stop that, we'd actually end up having to drink a lot of water, 
um, or fluid to, to try and recoup that because our sweat losses just far outstrip that. And the argument there would actually, that would be worse for performance because you're trying to drink so much that your body just can't take that. So you'll end up with tummy cramps and, and, and the such like. Um, yeah, and I, that's where it gets. I'll, I'll just cut in for a second. I always will lose that much, even in a normal run at an average pace. Like if I do a 21K run around around my house here, I'll lose, you know, three or four kilos. And I, I weigh myself before and after. And that's, you know, I only weigh 68 kilos. So, and, and drinking any more than that would be impossible because I'm already drinking like a 500 milliliter bottle, which I refill twice. Yeah. Your stomach just can't take on that much fluid. It's impossible. I mean, it's possible, but it would, it wouldn't be feasible to, to racing. So the, you know, I'd rather have that drop in, drop in performance from hydration loss than from being, you know, overstuffed with water. I think that's what you're definitely. Yeah. Um, and the, so then I guess the, the bit to move on to there is that we, we can't replace as much fluid as, as we sweat. We know that. So we want to replace some. Um, and the important thing here is to make sure that the water or the fluid you do drink has sodium in it. And that's because we lose sweat. Uh, we lose sodium when we sweat and we need sodium to, to make sure that our sodium levels stay up because sodium yeah, it's it's important in so many different processes in our body and our nerves firing in normal conduction. It's 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 integral. Um, so you have to have some sodium in your fluid, and ideally, there, there's a very big variation, and that's why it's it's good to kind of test it. But somewhere between about 500 milligrams of sodium um, to about 2,000 milligrams of sodium is the kind of average sweat loss per hour. Um, so you want to be looking at a sports drink that contains as a minimum 500 milligrams of sodium in one liter of fluid up to about 1500 milligrams of sodium per liter of fluid. And, and that that's going to keep you in a rough kind of equilibrium or at least a, a safe kind of ratio, um, for, for while you're racing and drinking to thirst is a good option um or it's not an unreasonable option otherwise aiming for something like 500 mils of fluid per hour is another good one and this is where it's important to test because you can try it at home and see how do i get on drinking that amount of fluid when it's just on the bike or for example when you run or are you someone who really is likely to get tummy upset in which case you might have to either practice or reduce the amount of fluid intake that you have right so Initially, I was looking at my my aero bars on my bike and my my kit and stuff, noticing the salt, noticing the the white salt deposits everywhere and all over my face. And I, I knew I knew I must be a heavy, a heavy sweat, not not heavy sweater necessarily, but a heavy sw- uh, salt loser, salty sodium loser, salty sweater. Yeah. And so then I got a. I got a sweat test done, a sodium test. They call it a sweat test, but it's a sodium test, right? To see how much sodium you lose per, per liter of sweat. And um, from there, like I figured I lose 1,425 milligrams, which is considered a lot. Um, but then on top of that, the part that they don't do is they don't do the sweat loss. So you know how much sodium you lose per liter of sweat, but how many liters of sweat do you lose? So I started measuring those just in Excel initially to figure out, you know, over an hour of a 10K run for an hour, for example, how much did I lose? And I'd weigh myself before and after, and I'd account for anything I drank along the way and figure it out. And I charted it in Excel again over graphs and everything. And I figured out how much I lost on the, on the bike, how much I lost on the run, how much I lost under different conditions like night, day, morning, hungry, all these different things to try to find correlations. It was really hard to find any correlations there besides obviously the heat. Um, But from that, then I determined how much sodium I needed per hour. If that were to correspond with how many liters of sweat I would lose per hour. 
and it sounded sound to me. But then I read this um, this website where they they really said, "Can you believe there's people out there who weigh themselves and people out there who actually measure their sodium losses and try to try to mathematically calculate how much sodium they need to replace?" Um, but uh, it's totally unnecessary. Uh, all the sodium you eat in your diet is sufficient for racing. And this is in a sports context, in a triathlon context. What do you, what do you say to that? I mean, it sounds like some people are saying it's not valid science or. Yeah. And you, you will always have this in that there'll be polar opposites and that's good because they push each other and it, it forces more research. It forces us to, to understand more. There's a couple of things to say there. You're, you're measuring things in Excel, your, your um, amount you or the, the weight you lose. I, I personally think it's a very good idea if you're interested in it, and especially if you're going to be racing hot or humid conditions. Um, now, we, we, rough, we can roughly say that per kilogram of weight we lose, that's a litre of sweat. There, there are, you could be more nuanced and think about how much energy you've used, but at a very basic level, one kilo of weight loss is one litre of sweat loss. And, and that's a very good thing to say, because then that also you can correlate that to the sodium um, amount per hour. Yes, our body is very good at recouping what it loses. Um, and certainly a lot of us would generally have a, a high salt diet and that will contribute. And there's studies which look at the amount of salt you sweat uh, corresponding to the amount you eat in your diet, uh, of, of salt in your diet. So the higher salt diet you have, the more salt you sweat. Um, and th there's probably some truth in that. Um, and th there's evidence that suggests that kind of the better or the harder you the more you exercise, sorry, and the kind of more acclimatized you get, the better you get at conserving salt. But that's that's kind of exceptional in the case that that's not every person. Not every person can do that. And there's, there's a couple of things to be very clear about. One is that you can race and lose a lot of sodium and have very low sodium levels and it'd be really quite dangerous. And that's something to, to be clear about in the what we've got from studies which look at sodium levels after racing is that people will drop their sodium levels. And that's very clear. Um, so, so to say that you know, we retain everything we, we need to is, is wrong by, by kind of definition because we know that's not the case. The other thing to say is that we can... Um, we can reduce our sodium levels just by drinking. Um, so just by drinking water. If we drank too much water in one go, we can drop those sodium levels very quickly. Um, and that happens, which is why it's important to not overdrink, which is where weighing becomes very helpful. Because you can see, actually, for the pace or intensity I'm doing, I'm gaining weight. And that, that's a clear sign that actually you're retaining more fluid than you're sweating out, in which case there's an imbalance because we don't want to be gaining weight while we race. So uh, I would say certainly from a safety point of view, that weighing yourself and knowing how much you might decrease or increase is actually very useful because that's a protection mechanism. And if you find that you're gaining weight, you shouldn't be. So, so that's something we should look into. Um, and so, you know, chatting to your family doctor there, unless you're, you're um, you know, really hammering it, in which case you just drink slightly less. Um, I, think, I think that's good. Now, the other thing to say is that people can get very fixated on hydration itself. And it's not all about hydration. The reason I say that is, in theory, it, some people might be possible to just not drink at all um, or very little, very little fluid, very little sodium. And they don't need it because their body result, you know, retains everything it needs to. What then they're not considering is the wider picture, which we need to consider in sport, nutrition and racing, in that fluid has a, an effect on our temperature and our core temperature. We know that the hotter we get, the worse we're going to race. And that in itself can be dangerous. And if you're drinking, you're going to help regulate that body temperature and bring it down. 
So fluid certainly has a benefit there. And that's clear in studies as well, that the hotter we get, the worse we race. So basically you're saying that sweat has a purpose. <laughs> sweat I mean, has a purpose, absolutely. The, the transpiration the whole, of that heat, taking the heat off of you. Absolutely. That, that is the reason we sweat, is that it puts it onto our skin and it then has to be evaporated and that cools us. Um, and, and just by taking colder fluids as well, we also are cooling our body and our internal core temperature. Um, so it would be you know, remiss to focus solely on hydration and say, you know, it's, it's not important where actually there's a bigger picture to, to consider. Right. So in a way, I lament the fact that I'm a heavy sweater, but I also should be happy that I'm, you know, pushing out more liquid to be evaporated and to carry the heat away from my body than the guy next to me, maybe. Yeah, because if you're not sweating, which some people will sweat less, especially if they are someone who physiologically just sweats less or they are um, well acclimatized, that's great. But also the offset is that they aren't going to be as cool, which then might impact their performance, which you know is why it's so important, uh, interesting, sorry, because th there's more than one thing to consider. Um, Excellent. There is that bigger picture. And I do notice, I have noticed over the years that as I've become more, uh, you know, as I've trained more and become fitter, I sweat more, a lot more. And, you know, I, I guess it's my body's way of uh, getting used to it and, and doing its job more. Is that something? Yeah. 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 Because the, the harder you work, the essentially the hotter you get, which means the more you need to cool down. And that's your body's way of doing it. I, I really mean over, over years from, you know, 10 years but, ago. But that, yeah, yeah. But that's, that's your generally, if you're consistent with your training, your pace is going to be going up. Your right. power is going to be going up. And by nature, that means you're working harder. You're producing, uh, you're using okay. more calories. Okay. You are increasing your body temperature. So, yeah. So that's, that's a given. Exactly. Yeah. So you, you are going to be sweating more no matter what, as you get fitter and faster. Excellent. So can we sum this up by saying that, you know, you lose sweat at a certain rate. Different people lose different amounts of sweat and different people lose different amounts of sodium at different quantities. And these things can all be tested. And that, you know, sweat is beneficial because it's, it's cooling you off. And uh, what else? The big one you said is you shouldn't be gaining weight, meaning if you're drinking water and you're, you, you're gaining weight, if you're not, you know, sweating more than you can drink. Because I, 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 it's impossible for me to drink more than I can sweat. I sweat out yeah. way faster than I can pour a bottle down my throat. But that, that was a pretty, pretty, pretty good sum up, I would say. Excellent. So maybe I'll just ask you, James, what, um, what sodium products do you, do you take or, or do you like? I tend to go down the line with science and sport. I've used them for years and, and, and I get on well with them. Um, that's kind of my go-to. Uh, I, I also, if I don't always use them, I will just add a pinch of table salt to different drinks or squash because that's just another way. T table salt is, is essentially the same thing. Um, or you can use it for the same purpose. Cool. I like precision hydration, 1500 for, for hardcore racing, like, like full yeah. Ironman or half Ironman, because the concentration is pretty high. Um, and I then, think it'd be great, actually. I'm sorry? Yeah, I, yeah, I was saying I think the precision hydration stuff is good and the, the different strengths, which make it quite clear for people. Yep. And also the different forms it comes in. It can come in a effervescent tablet, which I use you know, usually in the office after recovery, after a hard morning. Um, but during races, I take the, the powder and pour those into a bottle. And during the runs, I use the, the, the tablets. They're just blister packed mm -hmm. individual. So you can carry those and they don't get all sticky or anything because they're individually packed. And you can take those. I think there's 250 milligrams of sodium each. So on a full Ironman, I'm taking like 15 or 20 of those, but it, it works for me. It sounds crazy, I think, but... But that, that's it. It's individual. And if you're practicing and you're serious about it, then then you have to because everyone will be different. Um, and it's about practicing your fuel intake, so your nutrition, but also your hydration because they're, they're distinct. They're separate. And then the other point I'd like to make is some products, like another one, Element. Element. Its main ingredient is, is, is salt. So when you, when you eat it, you taste the salt. But with precision hydration and with UCAN and all these others, they use sodium citrate, which doesn't taste salty. 
So you don't taste, you don't get that feedback. And with Element, once the salt starts tasting bad, I know I've had enough. I, at least I believe that to be the case. So I get that, you know, I recognize it like, oh, it's too salty. Oh, man. Mm. Then you probably have had enough. But with the pH, you won't get that. So you may overdo it. So do you believe that's there's truth in that? Yeah. I, again, I think our body is very clever. Um, and this is the because there's you know there's people who question you know, whether you are a salty sweater or whether the difference matters, but but I think your body is quite clever and it's it's got these mechanisms for a reason. And if you are craving salty food or you think yeah I really need this, then there's probably a good chance that you do. And if you get to the point where you know, and that that's the thing of drinking to thirst. If you get to the point that you're like I'm not thirsty, but I'm chugging this there's probably a good reason that you don't feel thirsty. It's because you don't need it. Um, but there has to be an element of, of experimenting, especially with the humid ones, because actually it's probably better to go slightly more than, than kind of be on the, be on the tail end and having to play catch up because you can't. Yep. Um, yeah. That's not even going to happen. Yep. Very good. I've been there. I'm sure you have too. It's not exactly <laughs> fun. It's not, and it's the same with, with carb fueling and, and bonking. Once you hit that. Good night. It's a, it's a bad place to be. It is an uncomfortable wherever you are. All right. Well, with that, I'm going to go get a drink of water, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next video. Make sure you subscribe to James, uh, Nutrition Triathlon, and to me as well, and we'll look forward to a new one. Yeah, thanks very much. <laughs>